Hey everybody, uh, we're back again. Uh, again, thanks for watching. Um, I think today what I'm going to do is uh, the fourth update. Uh, we've done a lot of work this weekend and uh, just kind of want to bring you up to date on where we're at. We're hoping to have this thing running by uh, this Saturday, so been doing a lot of work in preparation for that. So let's go over some of, uh, some of the things that uh, we've done uh, thus far. So we're going to start in the interior. Um, I've shown uh, various uh, quick shots of the uh, interior and the way everything's going to be set up. Um, well, obviously we have an Audi steering wheel here. Uh, this is very comfy flat bottom steering wheel. I think it's going to work really fine for this application. We have a Dakota digital uh, dash which has some analog gauges on it but also has a display uh, below and if I turn the car on because I've been working on some of the electrical let's see the system come on so you can see that we're actually reading the water temperature data so our data stream is working we're using a Holly uh, dominator uh, EFI setup and we have both the dash here and this digital dash that are actually hooked up to the Dominator ECU. This dash uses a race pack uh, CAN bus protocol and then this one uses the standard Holly uh, CAN bus protocol. So we actually have upgraded our Dominator so that it has down here you can actually see it has an extra plug, I think this is J3, and that is actually the second CAN bus, so that we can independently control uh, the two CAN buses, so one can be race pack and one can be the Holly native one. Now the beauty about this dash is, is that it's infinitely configurable, so we'll have lots of different uh, choices here. And then we can do some custom work, which is what we're going to do, and put on some uh, switches. We're going to use this kind of blue type of layout, but we're going to put some switches and things on here, digital switches, that will then be run through the EFI uh, ECU. And then that will allow us to uh, keep the interior nice and clean. So we obviously have our button, we have our stereo, we have our display. Uh, we have a gear shift lever here, so that's one of the other things that I've worked on is the gear shift so that we actually now can shift into all of our gears. So all of that linkage is done. And all I did was, since this is an inverted transaxle, I uh, bought two of the uh, shift cable systems, which are these blue and green ones. Uh, that way I didn't have to change anything, I just had to basically extend the cables. And then I have a mating mechanism back here, which might, might or may not be able to see, which has some rods that attach the rods that come out of those uh, two cable connectors to one another. And that allows the normal operation of the inverted tra transaxle. So that's actually uh, pretty cool and it's working and we even have our our reverse gear so we can even go into reverse so everything seems to be working just fine and here you can see that the setup for the shifting is the same I've just bent those around at a modest radius I've made a mount here for those that set and then there's another mount over here hard to see for this set and then I've connected it with uh, stainless steel rods. So we just drilled a five millimeter hose or uh, hole in each end and then connected them uh, by TIG welding. Um, obviously we have our air system. I think I've gone over this before and I've kind of shown how the air system works. We've put in a lot of our uh, wiring harness we have our throttle cable set up. 
and the next thing is is that I'm going to put the sensors in the intake manifold. So the intake manifold uh, requires a, a temperature sensor and then also all the vacuum uh, components are run off of that and the vacuum components are actually underneath the intake so I've got to pull that off, weld a bung on there for the temperature sensor and uh, plumb up the, all of the vacuum lines. The other thing that we've done is we've plumbed uh, all of our uh, radiator lines. So those are all done. Uh, I've used as few uh, connectors as possible and where necessary uh, we've welded the tubes together uh, so that we can minimize the number of connectors. Um, so I've been doing a lot of aluminum welding uh, which actually if you've got the right welder uh, goes quite simply. Still waiting on some uh, brake components to mate these two guys together and to mount it to the frame. But most of the brake lines and the clutch lines have been run. Uh, in the next update in the brake system, we'll actually uh, plumb everything up and get the brakes working. So you'll be able to see that process. Um, so that's working quite well now too. And then in the second brake thing, we talked about these guys right here, which are the uh, parking brake cables. Um, I haven't got my parking brake handle yet. It's still on order. But what we did was we just pinned them in here with uh, some uh, stainless steel hardware. And that seems like it's going to be a pretty good, uh, nice uh, fit and very, very safe. So all of this setup seems like it's going to work. Uh, as I had hoped. So there's a good picture of the engine. Uh, it's a little messy right now. I still have to uh, tidy up the wiring. I want to make it nice and clean so that uh, it shows well and also functions well. Remember, good tidy uh, plumbing and wiring makes for a well-running vehicle. So keep that in mind if you're doing this uh, on your own. So uh, here is our uh, intake manifold, and we have to put this on, and that's a bung with the uh, sensor. So this is what we have to weld on, and it's going to go right here so that we can monitor our air, air temperature. And there you go. One welded in bung for the uh, air temperature sensor. So, that was pretty easy. You got the right piece of equipment. I love this thing. It makes aluminum welding so easy. So, if you're looking to do some TIG, pick one of these things up. They're about two grand. Um, and then you'll also need an argon bottle. <clears throat> but they're worth every penny if you're going to do a lot of fabrication. So, so now that we got this done, uh, I'm going to put on our injector harness. Um, put in our sensor. Uh, clean up the interface uh, gaskets and the uh, engine, and then we're going to go ahead and pop it back in. That went a lot smoother than I thought it was going to. <laughs> Gotta love the LS. And there it is. So, got it all installed. Had to lengthen the mat sensor 
uh, wire. Um, I also noticed that <laughs> I had the throttle body in upside down, so I had to fix that. That was pretty easy. Um, I could tell because the O-ring wasn't sealing on this side. So, so I got that fixed. Got all the harnesses in. It's all wired up. A little bit more uh, vacuum plumbing, and uh, she should be good to go to fire on Saturday. That's it for this quick update. Um, just kind of wanted to let you know what we were doing this weekend. If you have any questions, uh, uh, comments, be constructive as always, but uh, post them down below. And uh, really appreciate you guys, all of the uh, f fans that we've gotten and subscribers, so uh, hopefully we won't let you down. And we'll try to really just keep you up to date as much as we can on this build. So thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.